Hi. Well, this is a Dan Wesson uh, double action revolver. It's a model uh, 15 BH. And the BH uh, on these guns refers to the barrel shroud. And as you can see, this one has a ventilated rib and it's a heavy barrel. The VH ventilated heavy. And the standard uh, barrel uh, didn't have a designation. It would have been known just as a Model 15, 357 Magnum. And the ventilated rib without the heavy barrel was just a Model 15V. And these guns did have interchangeable barrels. And here is, a, I'm going to try to change one of these on camera, and I don't know how this is going to work trying to reach around the camera and looking through the viewfinder, but I'm going to give it a try. But here's a, how the barrel works here. See, the shroud is nothing but a shroud. The actual barrel is here. This screws into the frame of the gun, and on this end here you've got a locking nut which I'm going to go ahead and remove here to get ready to do this. And we'll start by taking the barrel off of... Uh, I've got the 4 inch barrel installed right now. See if we can get this off of here. Now, of course the gun is empty. As you can see here, this locking nut here has a couple of cutouts here match the multi-tool here so you essentially just set this down the bore of the gun and line up the the lugs twist it counterclockwise go ahead and remove the locking nut completely at that point, the shroud will just slip right off. Now, as you can see, there's a hole here that matches up with a pin on the frame to make sure that you get the, the shroud in the right position. Now once the shroud is off and uh, the locking nut is off here, the locking nut just simply pulls the barrel this way while pushing the shroud that way and locks it in. At this point you can just go ahead and screw the barrel right out of the frame. Like so. And then just uh, Put the locking nut back on it, slip it back into the shroud, and store it away. And we'll set that aside, and I'll see if I can install this other barrel. Well, reaching around a camera here. And of course, uh, it only fits in one way. And of course you've got to get it started straight and that's kind of difficult to do reaching around the camera. But anyway, there it goes. Now you run it in until you get it close to the cylinder. See if I can get this to show here. Like I said, it's kind of clumsy doing this, around, reaching around the camera. Okay, now you can see there, getting uh, fairly close to the cylinder with the barrel. And that's where the feeler gauge here comes in. You set that in there like so. That's a six thousandths uh, feeler gauge. And just... Uh, Gently run the barrel down onto the feeler gauge and then slide it right out. And it's hard to see the cylinder gap there. I'm going to have to put it up to the light to be able to see it. 
Yeah, it looks like we got about the right gap there. The, the feeler gauge uh, is six thousandths and should, uh, you know, set the barrel at the right length. But it never hurts to, you know, check visually, you know, to make sure that you got enough gap for the cylinder to turn without rubbing on anything. Now, the shroud uh, comes next here. It just sets down over the barrel, like so. And you got to get it lined up with that pin. Now, once you get that far, just take your uh, locking nut and get it uh, started on there. I guess that's clumsy doing this around the camera. Probably should have done it with the 8 inch barrel installed and switched to the 4 inch. It would have been easier to do on camera that way. But anyway, once you get that, just take your tool and tighten it down. And it doesn't it doesn't have to be excessively tight, but you do want it to be snug enough that it's not going to come loose and just about like that now the final thing to do is to uh, check again to make sure that your cylinder gap hasn't disappeared on you and it still looks good I don't think you can see the cylinder gap maybe you can through the camera if I get just the right angle hard to tell but anyway the final thing to do is just to function test it to make sure that it's not rubbing and it looks like it came out pretty good so anyway there you have it simple way to change the barrel on one of these and I want to do an end of video shout out and this one's for Alaric 357 and I'll put a link to his channel in the description of this video. If you get a little free time, go check him out. He's got a good channel. Uh, if you do go check him out, make sure you check out his uh, old videos on uh, 44 AMP, the old Auto Mag. It's a pretty rare gun and really an interesting one. One of the few people on YouTube that I know that has one of them. Well, thanks for watching.